What happened? There we go. Hey, Carver. What's, what's up, man? man? Man, I'm chilling. What's going on, man? Good, good to see you again, man. How's everything? Uh, everything is good. Cool, cool. Let me just ask you, um, when the interview's over at the end of the video, just hit um, to save it. So then we can save it on our end, too. Okay. Well, good, because I, cool. I don't even know how to go live, so that's real <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for the whole thanks for like, how the hell do you go live on this drone? I don't really know. You know so you I mean? learned something today. Yeah, I mean, that's the old life, the old man life. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time, man. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and support you over the years, man. Love everything you do, you know. It's all love from our direction. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that too, Tom. I appreciate you, bro. Absolutely. Got a lot to talk about, you know, during this interview. Um a lot of the history. Uh, but, you know, first off, I got to hit you with this, man. You've seen these producer battles going around, right? Songwriter producer battles? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get one lined up for you to be in. Oh, that's and funny. I got, I got someone in mind. Who you have so in let mind? Me know, let me know if you agree. I would like to see you go against Andre Harris. Uh, that's my brother. I mean, actually, most of them, we got a couple <laughs> records together, but, you know. I know. But head to head, I think it'll be fun. You know, it's all uh, love. It's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Those battles are fun. So, but yeah, I know you got history. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the reason we've been started talking about doing this interview, you got a new artist out with a new project. So I wanted to hear you. You give us a little insight onto that. Well, um, the artist her name is Deja Blue. She's um, from Philly. Uh, a, a fact is, uh, a unknown fact is, she is the daughter of Troy Corbin, who used to be the background singer of Music Soul Child. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's a childhood friend of mine that years ago, his, his daughter found me online and brought him to the studio and reconnected us. And when she did, I connected him uh, with being a background singer for music. So he toured with music, I think, for his, sec his uh, first and second album. And I think part of the third album as well. Mm. Yeah. That's dope. And, and, and it's a new project out, right? Yeah, we got the new project out. It's called um, Blue Waves, and it's right. really just the introduction of Deja Blue. Like a year and a half ago, we dropped um, Color You. Right. And just to give everybody a taste of what she does, and we waited till we uh, put together this project, and, and it's it's doing pretty good, man. It's, it's a great project. If you haven't heard it, go stream it now. It's incredible. The, the, the girl is phenomenal. Great vocal range, great sound, feeling, timing. And her pen is sharp too, so it's a good thing. Yeah, we we really like the record "Color You." We had it in our countdown, I believe, last year when it came out as one of the top songs of the year. So that's a dope record. Yeah, that's yeah, like album too. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the EP is just a peak. We still we got like a hundred songs, man. So we're gonna right. drop. We're dropping the EP, and then we're gonna wait a little bit and drop another one, and kind of just you know flood the market a little bit with Deja Blue. Dope, dope. I mean, what even excites you in, in this day and age? You've had so much success in this music industry. You know, I remember you putting us on the Bria Marie when you first started working with her. Like, what even excites you about a new artist when you want to work with them? Well, you know, it's, there's a lot of things. It's, it's uh, humility. It's, it's um, the love of the music. It's the desire to get it done, um, willing to make change, and just just uh, pure artists. I mean, they don't right. have to be super talented or look a certain way. They just got to have a certain head on their shoulders and moldable because we you know we're not just writing songs to excite you sexually we're mm -hmm. trying to write songs to excite you mentally physically spiritually to make you think different make you look at the world different we kind of answer questions that that are unasked but um thought out you know what i mean so we right. just try to put things in perspective to put it out there for young people when they listening to it they can see the way um, a situation unfolds and a way to resolve it other than the way that they already know how to resolve it. That's dope, man. I love that perspective because we don't get a lot of that right now. You know, it's kind of rare. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, the, the, the key is always being different, right? I figure if if you own a blue Bentley and somebody bring you a blue Bentley, how how possible is it that you would stop driving the one that you're driving to get in the same car <laughs> you've been driving? Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. Like, bring me a motorcycle. I'll be able to use that. Matter of fact, a pickup truck. Bring right. me something that I can use outside of my car because I already got that car. So that's the way I look right. at the industry. If you already got a, a, um, a Megan Stallion or you got this, then we don't need to give you that. We need to give right. you something that you don't have. No, that's real, man. And I really respect that. Uh, thank you, bro. So, 
you know, it's a big year. Two two albums you had a big part of are turning 20 years old this year, celebrating their 20th anniversary. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Music Soul Child's debut and, and Jill Scott's debut. You had yeah. a huge hand in music's debut. Um, I just want to ask, though, like, back when that whole Philly Soul thing was happening, you know, Music Soul Child, Jill Scott, you know, Flo Tree, just name a few. Did you realize what you were a part of and how big it would become? Well, you know, here's the thing. You never know you're making history when you're making it. You only know you're making history until it's history, yeah. right? So uh, I think what what we knew, we were on the precipice of, of greatness, and we knew that what we were doing was different. And the whole mindset and idea of a music soul child was, again, it was something that was not there. At the time that music came, mm. there was um, the R&B talking about stars and quasars and all of this <laughs> fantasy-type life, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. what, what my, my goal with the Music Soul Child project was to make it more real. Let's talk about what we look at every day, what we see, and, and um, the creation of, of the identity of Music Soul Child was the right. intelligent hoodlum. You know mm. what I mean? We, we wanted to, there, there's a lot of cats that roll with some thugs who are really smart and, and, and well-educated, but they live in a neighborhood where it's, it's thugs. So these right. are the people they grew up with, and some of them made different choices, and and these are your friends. So it's always that one guy that's in the middle of the crowd that when mm -hmm. the girl walk by and everybody's trying to talk and she don't speak and they like F U B it's always that one dude that's like, yo, come on, man, chill. Yeah. Yo, sorry, miss. You know what I mean? So that's who right. music soul child is. He's that dude. Right. I mean, I remember when I personally first heard that album, I just remember it being so relatable. And that's what, what kind of pulled me in the lyrics where I felt them like I could relate to them. You know, a lot of R and B it was kind of you know, I couldn't always relate. Some of the some of the artists seemed like they were on a pedestal. Music yeah. just seemed like that that cool dude that you knew from around the neighborhood, and like you, we didn't really have that at the time. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And the only thing closest to it we had was D'Angelo, mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, and the great thing about D'Angelo was, I mean, for us was he's so much of a musician that in his creation he went too artistic and not not a, not enough urban, not enough street. So right. for us, it was like, okay, I, I was a rapper at the time. So it was like, all I got to do is write these rhymes in a certain way and, and get a vocalist that can sing it the way I want it said. And, right. and that's what we did. Even a song like, I mean, music's first single, Just Friends, Sonny. Like, you, you wouldn't hear a song with lyrics like that in R&B. You know, a lot of it was about making love and, and, and for the bedroom. But that one was more about we could just be friends. Like, you didn't really get that message before in R&B. Is that what you went for? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and the, and the creation of that record was something different too. Um, Ivan, my partner at the time, he, when we were at a touch of jazz, he wasn't landing many projects, and I told him I was like, "Docs, I'm gonna get you a single," because mm -hmm. we all, all the rest of us was there every day, and and Ivan was working from Atlantic City, so he would mm -hmm. drive, he would come into Philly every weekend, and stay from Friday till Sunday, and then catch the bus wow. and go back to Atlantic City. So everybody else was there all week long. So. I told him, I was like, give me your beat tape. I'm, I'm going to get you a single. So he right. gave me the beat tape, and he gave music a copy of the beat tape. And one day, music came in with the um, with the Just Friends beat. And I was like, y'all was listening to that same beat, too. And he sang a song to it. And I was like, now nah, the song is trash, but but the flow <laughs> is dope. So let's, yeah. let's see if we can flip it and make it make sense. And so it just went in and rewrote it and, and, right. and made it all make sense, yeah. I mean, I just have to name off some of these songs because the lyrics were just so creative, like Girl Next Door, you never really heard like that. You know, Love Even People, you know, the message was just presented so dope. Like 143, just so creative. 17, we never heard a record like that. You yeah, know, um, yeah. Paparazzi, just yeah. so creative. You know, like these are just the creativity shown on that project was so amazing to me. And, and you as a songwriter really, you know, did your thing. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, actually, what's funny is that first album was a lot of my production mm. as well. Um, it, it wasn't until we moved into the second album, Ivan kind of picked up most of the production. But right. um, that, that, that whole idea of the first album was my brainchild. So every record that, that's on there um, that I had something to do with all came from an idea or concept that I thought would be great. And so a 143 came from a conversation with the um, uh, uh, ex girlfriend of mine, um, she used to page me one four three. You know, we had pages, right? So yeah. she, would, she would hit me one four three, and one day I was like, "Yo, what does one four three? What is yeah. that?" And she was like, "One letter for I, four for love, 
and three for you. I was like, ah, oh, that's dope. I'm right. Like, I'm right the record about it. So, yeah. um, so uh, me and music was in the studio one day. I was like, listen, here's here's the concept. We're just gonna write it out. So we started writing it, and then we got Keith Pelzer to come in and kind of work the track around what we were writing with that record, and then. Paparazzi, another record, it was one. That's actually one of my favorite records. That's mm -hmm. highly slept on. But when we created it, uh, the the management team, music's management team at the time, Mama's Boys, is like, "Yo, yo, the song doesn't say Paparazzi in it." We was like, "Just friends don't say just <laughs> yeah, friends in it either." Yeah. And it was like, I was like, "But it's the concept. Picture me." And the hook right. is saying, "Picture me, picture me." That's what Paparazzi do. So that's why the song is called Paparazzi. You right. Know? So. That's so dope. And then the song Love, I mean, I think I had texted you a while back because some fans were confused if that's actually a religious song or not, but it's actually not, right? Like no. you tell me. Yeah, that song was created simply because um, uh, we were in the studio working, and at the time, Andre Harris was in there, and I was working behind the mixing board, and music came in, and he was like, yo, man, I want to make a, a, a sex record. And I was <laughs> like, nah, man, you can't make yeah. a sex record. He was like, Carl, I need to make a sex record. I was like, my dude, you ain't sexy, though. Like, <laughs> like you, you got to be sexy to make a sex record. We could do something Damn. better than that. He was like, all right, all right. So I was working behind the mixing board. He was like, yo, I was like, yo, you know what? Let's let's write a love record. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, hold on real quick. Let me finish uh, figuring out how to get the board working because uh, Keith Pelzer would basically rig the room so it wouldn't work. Until he come in there so he can have the room. So I was right. figuring out how to put the room back together to make it oh, work. Oh, man. And then I, I figured out what, what plugs he pulled out. And um, so we started working on the record. I was like, yo, let's just have a conversation with the emotion. Let's talk the love itself. Let's have a conversation with love. And, you know, and, and that record manifested from there. But, of course, you know, uh, in hindsight, 2020, right? So um, yeah. Yeah, when you look back, from looking from being forward looking back you realize that you know god is love and love is god so yeah it is a spiritual record but i didn't know at the time it was being <laughs> yeah you know what i mean after you did that that album were you getting because of the creativity because it was so different did you get a lot of attention as far as other artists coming to you for records after that how did that go well actually what's funny is a lot of people started to come um for the sound and believe it or not uh, um, they came to us about the, the Michael Jackson Butterflies record and they wanted a, a record like Just Friends and mm -hmm. uh, me and Ivan didn't want to do it and at the time Jeff was uh, pushing Dre and Vidal as the, as the face for A Touch of Jazz so oh, they, wow. yeah so they put Dre and Vidal um, on that on that record and, and uh, Marsha and, and Dre came up with that record but if you listen to Just, uh, Just Friends and Butterflies it's same thing that that uh three four time and bass move right. a certain way keys it's really a, a, a remixed version of just friends you know what i mean right right but me and ivan just wouldn't do it because of the fact that it's like we're not gonna chump our hand if, if we give everybody music soul child sound then what makes it sound different you know what i mean yeah yeah wow that's real that's real yeah yeah before we jumped on this call i was i was going back through your whole discography to try to you know, just re remind myself, you know, I'm very familiar with your work, but I just wanted to remind myself. I was thinking, like, do you remember, do you have any songs in particular you thought could have been singles, like, that you produced for albums over the years? Like, it might be hard to answer on the spot, but has anything come to mind for any artist? Wow. Um, I mean, we did we did quite a few records. We did a record with Justin Timberlake, um, yep. Am I Worthy Of, which is, yep. to me, I thought was a, a great record. And uh, it, it was something that could have been a, a big single. We did a, a, um, a record for Chris Brown. Uh, it came out, but it should have been a record on, um, on it's called So Glad. And we used mm -hmm. the Michael, the Jackson 5 sample, uh, that Biggie Break sample. Right. So we used that record. And that would, have been a, that would have been a really big record as well. But yeah, I mean, as, as I can remember, those two right there are the two that, uh, rest on my mind a little bit. I'm gonna throw a couple at you. I felt like you know the song you guys did for TGT. For an uh, album? Uh -huh, I felt uh -huh. I felt like that was the strongest song on the album, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I now, love now what's funny is that's actually Crystal Oliver um, uh, writing and arranging on that with Ivan, mm -hmm. um, with, gotcha. with you know, with the with the team. Of course, when when me and Ivan do things uh, separately, we still as Carbon yeah. and Ivan, but that's gotcha. Crystal, that's Crystal Oliver. But she's dope. 
and she's one of the proteges. Actually, Crystal wrote um, uh, um, uh, the Raheem Devon record with me. Gotcha. All right. mm -hmm. Someone in the in the in the chat mentioned "Like Me Real Hard" for Mario. Should've oh yeah, uh, "Like Me Real Hard" would have been a huge record. Like I love that record. Again, yeah. another conversation. You know, again, right. all of the records that you heard are real honest records and conversations that we just had around the studio. People communicating yeah. and saying something's like, "Yo, that's a record. I'm about to write that joint." Yeah, and really, that's like, just what it is. Yeah. I always felt like one monopoly for music soul child was tailor made to have a single in a video like that. I, I don't know, yeah. I don't know who, whose decision that was, but man, that could have been you know one of those. Right. Well, yeah, one monopoly is 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 one of my favorite too. And believe it or not, that record is actually written about my mom. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my mom's wow. record. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um. So let me ask you then, you, you did a lot of work on music's first and second albums. Which one do you prefer of the two? Um, actually, uh, well, we did the first, second, third, and I think the fourth. But uh, the first to me was, I you know, I can't even choose because the second was amazing too. It mm -hmm. was, it, again, it was growth and we were, we were at that point of really stretching. So it worked out really good. Right. Yeah. You were, like I mentioned, instrumental in Jill's beginnings, too, and worked on, you know, a bunch of her albums. Did, did you see her as a star? Like, you know, I know it took her some time to get on, but did you know she was going to be what she is now? Oh, absolutely. Like, Jill Scott is a star. Like, she's a star in full-fledged. Like, mm -hmm. definitely. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, she, Jill, when I tell you is, we knew exactly, knew for a fact that she was going to be everything that she is and everything that she, she is now. Like right. her persona it was huge. And, and watching her and come in the studio and, and, and just be humble and be willing to be there, as well as come in with her, her uh, book of poetry yeah. and just like, just open, open for creativity, open for <laughs> suggestions and ideas. Like, yeah, yeah, you kind of okay. knew. Yeah. So I got to shout out a project, you, you, another project you had a big part on it, which also celebrated 15th anniversary recently, and that's Faith Evans' First Lady album. Oh, now, man. You, 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 and, you and Ivan's work on the album is just, it, to me, it's like a masterpiece. So, I mean, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I tell you what, if now that you brought that up, Stop and Go, Hands down. <laughs> yeah. 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 If that record yeah. would have dropped, that would have killed the game. Yeah. But Faith, man, that, that session was incredible, right? Yeah. We went there. Uh, we were there for four days, and we did 14 records in four days. And, and the way we were set, we did seven records in, in four days, and then we stayed another two days and did 14 records. But the way we were creating the records, it was all happening in the same room. So uh, the, the studio was had like a you know every studio has the booth the mm -hmm. uh the mixing board and then there's another board behind that that person right almost right. like where people sit and eat or whatever so on the the uh the island behind me me i was sitting at the mixing board the island behind me ivan had up the whole production set up so while we were cutting vocals ivan was making a beat and as soon as he would finish the beat we listened to it we'll move it over to Pro Tools and start writing and cutting to it. <laughs> and start working on another beat. It was like yeah. that type of assembly line. And yo, I, I got to say Faith Evans, like Dunaway, that's, that's my girl. Like she, yeah. she, she's definitely one of the, one of the greats. And Raheem Devon is hands down like that. That's, that's one of my favorites too. So man, I mean, Stop a Go is just an example of how, uh, unique your songwriting is because you know it was just you don't hear lyrics like we're talking about this whole interview you don't get lyrics like this in r and B. I I don't even know what are your processes for coming up with songs like this but you really don't get enough credit for it yeah you, you know what's funny I can't like I can't say that there is a there there is a, a, a process it's more like once the track is created the words kind of just appear right so um, I, I try to make sure I'm not drug induced or alcohol induced, yeah. and I try to make sure that I'm in tune to what God is whispering um, while the music is playing, because words will come to you. And when I'm when I'm listening, the words will start falling. 
mm. and I don't I don't use a pen because a pen slows me up. So I just like listen and let the words fall into place, and, and before you know it, we have a song going. So, wow. But yeah, that stop and go was was incredible. Yeah. And, and my man uh, Jay Sean Champion, he came in and blessed the joint with this incredible vocal arrangement and then he mm -hmm. also add, added some some lyrics to the, to the record as well and, and um yeah so yeah jay sean champion that's my that's my nephew oh. i mean i know you mentioned raheem devon and you had customer the grammy nominated single on him but i love the work you did on um i think it's a place called loveland album you had the song complicated was one of them i love that oh, yeah. record right yeah yeah now, yeah complicated was done with me and ryan toby and we did that in LA, and believe it or not, we did that record. Uh, they flew us out to LA to uh, make records for Rihanna, and they they had like I guess a bazillion producers and, and writers in LA for like a week for working on a Rihanna project. And that record was created in the process for Rihanna, and then um, uh, Raheem heard it, and it was like it was perfect for his voice. So wow, we dope. just transferred it over to Raheem. Yeah, that's dope. Let me ask you this. As you progress further into your career and um, and music, you know, the sound of R&B had been changing. How much more competitive and how much harder was it for you to get placements, to get singles on, on albums? Like, how did that all work out? Well, you know, right now, the game is so, um, it's kind of like a self-sufficient machine, right? So each, each artist already have their writing camps, already right. have their uh, publishing companies, and then they have writers signed to their publishing company. So they're, they're kind of, uh, I guess, monopolizing their own career, which makes sense, right? right. If, if it's your business, you want to make sure it goes the way you want it to go. So um, uh, placing records, are um, it, the, it's a great way, it's a great place, it's still a great thing to do. Um, complicated kind of, because, uh, you know, people think you old until you get in the room with them and then you give them a record that's incredible. So, uh, you know, it's just making sure that you reinvent yourself. You're making sure that, that your ear is to the streets and you know what people are talking about. But the one thing that never changed, love never changed, love never folds, love never dies. Everything else, sex is here for two minutes and it goes away, but love lasts forever. So as long as you can weave love into a record, a record is going to last forever. Right. That's dope, man. I love that message. Now, I got to ask you this. You know, I haven't seen Carvin and Ivan's name on a song in a while together. You know, um, what can you tell us about, you know, you guys work together? Are you still, you know, doing stuff or? Oh, yeah. We actually, we did. We, last year, we had the um, we had the Stokely Williams organic right. record out there. Um, and, and so we, we still do things separately and together gotcha. as well. So okay. and the, the Deja Blue two records that that was both of us. So. It was both okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and this uh, and I have a project coming out on Good Friday, and Ivan's like, you know, he's all the way in it. Awesome. And we ha we have some records on there that was uh, created. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but this, I will get back to that. Let's, we'll get back to that. You know yeah. what it is, though, man. You can't even find liner notes anymore. So maybe <laughs> me, I'm you know I'm confused because. They don't, they don't provide those anymore. It's all digital now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I think they're figuring out a way now to put it on Spotify. It's just all based up on the person who's, who's uploading to uh, put that information in there. Right, gotcha. Yeah. Well, you were speaking about some of the stuff you had coming up. Is there anything else you, you would like to fill us in on that you've, you've been working on? Well, yeah. So right right now, um, again, uh, Deja Blue, Blue Waves is, is out and doing really good. And on Friday, we're releasing... Um, in the key of love. So on my 50th birthday, I wanted to release a project on on December 10th, but mm -hmm. it didn't work out the way I needed it to go and everything is in God's timing. So everything was delayed. And with it being delayed, we ran across a record that Music and I wrote 25 years ago. That was an incredible record. So we just went back in and remixed it and made it sound like it needed to sound and it's a record that's going to be on there and on this project is 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 carvin hagen's presents in the key of love and basically it's, it's going to be records uh that i've written me reintroducing love back to the system um and and it's love every complexion of love like from every facet of love from being together to wanting to leave and, right. and managing in a good way. So, um, you know, we just, I just put my pen to the pad and partnered and co-wrote with a lot of recording artists and 
um, it's going to be a really, really interesting project. Um, and it's, you said it's coming out this Friday? Yep. And who, who else is on there, if you don't mind me asking? What other artists did you work with? Well, you know, uh, Algebra Blissett, mm. um, Olivia Les Leslick, she's, in, she's from London, Bova, who is from California, uh, Raheem, of course, music. Mm. Uh, and and there's a couple surprises when you get it. You you like oh whoa that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, it's a couple of things on there. That's that's uh, but it's it's just feel good R and B. Not right. trying to be anything that that that's there. If you want music that feels good and you love music that feels good, then this mm -hmm. project is for you. Right, that's dope, man. I gotta say, you were part of one of the dopest projects I heard in some time, and that was the uh, playlist retreat sessions with Jazzy Jeff. A few years ago, that he put out the one where Glenn Lewis was singing on every track. Yeah. And, uh, man, I, I hadn't heard something so unique and pure like that in a while. I thought, I thought it was so dope. Like, what are those retreats like? Man, I tell you what, they're like the, the most amazing place you can be as a creative, right? Because in, in, the, in the music industry, as you get older, people make you feel like you, you've lost what you that talent that you have. Or, mm -hmm. uh, or the industry will make you believe that you're not as talented as you are or as you were, you know. So those retreats are actually great for all of the people that are involved because it's, it's young artists, it's new artists, and as well as it's older artists who, ha who have had major hits and older writers and young writers and older producers and young producers and just everybody working together, the synergy and the, just the whole creative field. It's, it's great to create with no restraints. Right. It's great to create, not trying to make a record for the radio or right. create to where you got to present it to an A&R who knows nothing about music to tell you what they think is great for your people. So it's great to be able to create that way. So and granted, oh. we've, we, me and Ivan have always created that way, but it's great to watch other people experience that lifestyle of, of uh, creation. That's amazing, man. Love that work. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely every time it's like a rejuvenation, you know what right. I mean? Because you yeah. learn something new, and and then you're reminded of something that you used to do, and and then everything, the synergy is just good. So, hey, and speaking of Glenn Lewis, if you could find that guy and work with him again on his next project, we'd love to hear that because he's another one that's we love his voice, and I know you've done some work with him. Yeah, conversations are already being had. We'll talk about that later. Oh wow! Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. All right, so one last thing for you. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, I'm going to put you on the spot one more time. Of, of the hit songs you've written over the years, you know, it sounds like a lot of your songs come to you naturally, and, and you know, it's not always it's easy for you, but what was the hardest song for you to write, you know, of the ones, of the hits you've put out? You know, like, what was the most challenging for you? Yeah, I, it, it's never challenging. Really? Never. It's you got a gift, man. You got yeah. a gift. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's here. Here's the thing, right? Like, when when you've lived your life to want to live your dream, it could never be challenging living your dream. Mm. You know what I mean? Wow. Now, if you was asking me about lifting boxes at UPS or <laughs> working at the mail office, I could say, man, it's rough going in there. But I don't know what that feels like. Right? <laughs> so. Uh, I get up every day and create. Like I get up every day and 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 create from how I feel or what's on my mind or even or not. You know what I mean? So right. it, it's it's never difficult. E even when you run across those artists who are picky, it's, it's good that they picky because they want to make sure the record suits them. Or you know they say the artist is a diva. Well, you know what? Sometimes they need to be a diva because that's what's going to make the record hot. So right. whatever it comes with. That's that's a that's a great part of the job because you know right. you could be standing outside trying to trying to put letters in the mailbox. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, there's no difficult side of this. It's, it's just it's just creativity, man. It's just music. That's amazing, man. You got a gift, and I want to thank you for providing us with that gift all these years. You've given us so much great music, man. You know, my only wish is that you get more recognition. You know, you deserve so much of it. Well, you know what, Tom? I, I think. Uh, one of the things that me and Ivan did, which is a gift and a curse, is that we tried to make sure that we were invisible, mm. right? We, yeah. we never wanted our production to overshine the artist. Right. Everything that we did, we went in to create the suit for the artist, right? Not We yeah. didn't want to create the suit and then the artist go out and say, yeah, this is Dior. It's like, no, 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 that's that's a Chris Brown. 
whatever whatever you put on no, that's the music soul child and the music soul child is never going to sound like a chris brown and the yeah. jill is never going to sound like a, like a faith evans or a Lettucey or you know what i mean or 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 earth wind and fire you know what i'm saying so it's like our job is to make sure uh, the job of, of the producer is to become a chameleon and create music that makes the artist look like a superstar and yeah. that's, that's that's what we've done and like i said it's a gift and a curse because we're not on the stage jumping around or we're not in the <laughs> video, you know, uh, getting the spotlight or whatever. But yeah, you know, it, 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 it worked out great. I can walk yeah. the streets. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, while you guys are being so humble, a lot of the producers were having their own, their tag on every song and they were, they were, you know, putting their vocals on track. So you knew they were there, you know? Yeah. But you know, the most amazing thing is every person that came in with a tag went out real quick. Right. Mm. So, so the moment that you tag a record with your name, you've actually started your expiration date. Wow. Okay? Like That's deep. If, if you don't put your name on it, then they don't know who did it until until it's over, until they love it and they love it forever. And then it's like, oh, Carvin and Ivan did that? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that, right? So it's wow. like, so here we are 30 years later, still with records on the radio right now. We got records yeah. charting right now on the radio 30 wow. years later. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> Because I never thought of that. I never yeah. thought of it like that's crazy. Yeah, but think about every every producer that tagged their name on the record. Neptunes. You know what I mean? Bad boy. Yeah. Mustard. You know what I mean? Anybody who tagged their name on the record is kind of like it, you 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 you've actually just started your death. Like Yeah. You know what I mean? And granted, all of those guys are still producing, but yeah. you know, they had to go through the high and then the the ultimate low. And then work themselves back up to the high. With me, Ivan has been actually consistent for thirty years. Well, let me just say the thing I've always respected about you guys—you're one, two of the most humble dudes I've ever met in the industry. Because a lot of the, the producers they crave that attention and they want to be recognized, but you guys just go about your business, make great music, and don't even need that. You're just satisfied with, with the work you do. Yeah, well, Tom, here's the thing, man. This is God's gift, man. It's yeah, like, yeah. You know, I can't, I can't take credit for what God does. If God used me as a vessel, use Ivan as a vessel to give right. people the music that he needs them to hear, then that's good. And after it's over, we, we're just happy that people can enjoy it. And then we go back to the lab and start all over again. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? It's amazing, man. I love that outlook. But all right, man, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Once again, thank you so much. I can't wait to hear this project on Friday. You, you know, we'll definitely be supporting it. And uh, thank you. Just keep it coming, man. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you very much for all of yes. the years. You, you, your love and support, man. I really, really appreciate your time. Absolutely, man. We'll talk yes, soon. Sir. Yep. All right. Later. Peace.